This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, well, let's carry on with the transmitting factor analysis. And if you remember, uh, we've done exercise one, uh, where we used conventional limiting factor analysis, uh, and we decided that we should make 19,000 of A, 10,000 of B, and the maximum profit we could generate was 55,000. Well, as I said uh, when we, at the end of the last lecture, we're now going to take exactly the same example, uh, the space on the next page, but it's exactly the same example. I'm going to read through all the figures again. Um, same example A and B and so on. But this time we're going to use uh, a throughput accounting approach. And what the difference is, is this. There's just one big thing to remember. And then just a few definitions. We said it seemed perfectly sensible that if we produce fewer units, or more units, but it, if we change the level of production, the revenue will be higher or lower. All right, let's say we've got to reduce here. So if we, if we reduce less of either of the units, we get less revenue in total. And we get less variable costs. There'll be less materials, less labour, less variable overheads. It's the contribution, we said, would get higher and lower. But think about it in real life. In the short term, you know, perhaps over the next month, next week. If we produce fewer units and sell fewer units, obviously less revenue. If we produce fewer units, there'll be less material costs. However, for most businesses, I'm not saying this is a rule, every business is different, but for most businesses, just because next month you produce less units, your wages bill, your labour bill, well, is more to stay constant. You know, I don't know where you work, whoever you are who's watching me, but for most businesses, you have a fixed labour force. Some months or some weeks, they're working harder and producing more. Some weeks, um, they're working less hard and producing less. But you tend to have a fixed labour force who in the short term, there's a fixed wages bill. In the long term, no. If in the long term, you found you were producing uh, fewer units, you'd need less staff. You'd cut staff, you'd have less cost. But, sorry repeating, but in the short term, most businesses don't, you know, one week have fewer staff, the next week have more staff and so on. For most businesses in the short term, labour costs are fixed. And in fact, in the short term, for most businesses, all costs are likely to be fixed, except for materials. Certainly, produce less, you need less materials, that's, that's going to be a variable cost. And that is the one big assumption that throughput accounting makes. With throughput accounting, we assume that in the short term, the only variable cost is materials all other costs are fixed now if i said that too fast go back and um, sort of replay that a little bit but that's the big assumption we make in throughput accounting, which I think is more realistic for most businesses. 
you know, and the short term, the labour bills fixed and so on. But we now do exactly what we did in exercise one, but with that one assumption. And what did we do? First of all, without repeating all the ones you example one, remember it's exactly the same figures here. But first of all, we looked at the contribution per unit. Contribution was the uh, selling price less the variable costs. We do here, although to avoid any confusion, we change its name. Instead of calling it contribution per unit, uh, we call it the throughput per unit. And the reason it's different, of course, um, the contribution of this definition, the selling price is 25, but if the only variable cost is materials, well, materials for A are 8. And therefore, on this definition, the contribution of the throughput, 25 less 8, is 17. And similarly for B. Uh, selling price 28, the only variable cost materials of 20, and so the throughput per unit. As I say, we no longer call it contribution, otherwise we're in the danger of getting muddled, but it's the same thing. But there is the throughput per unit. Um, again, uh, we need to know which is best, but for exactly the same reasons as before, we have to take into account um, the units of the limited resource, the machine hours per unit. Before we worked out, sorry, start again. Machine hours per unit is two hours for A, one hour for B. And last time, we based it on contribution per hour, fine. Same here. We'll base it on the throughput per hour. Uh, 17 uh, for two hours, this is generating $8.50 an hour, whereas B, $8 for one hour, is $8 per hour. And so although uh, the ranking doesn't have to change, in fact you won't be doing it both ways, it will either be conventional or it will be throughput, uh, but here in fact A is the better of the two, B um, is second best. That's the throughput per hour, or it's also called the return per factory hour. <coughs> uh, now again, obviously only um, spend your time answering what's asked for in the question. In this question, A, it says, just like before, calculate our optimum production plan and maximum profit on the assumption that in the short term all the material costs are variable, i.e. using throughput accounting. So just like before, our plan, but I say just like before, the approach is the same as before, but this time A is best, so make as many A's as we can, which is 20,000. And that uses up at two hours a unit. It uses up 40,000 hours. There were 48,000 available, so we've still got a balance of 8,000. And we use them to make the second best product B. Well, that takes one hour a unit, so in 8,000 hours, we can make 8,000 units. How much profit? Sorry, again, if we just want the plan, we've got it. However, what's the maximum profit going to be from that? Well, we work out the total throughput first of all. Effectively, total contribution. So it's 20,000 A's, 8,000 B's. The throughput contribution per unit of A was 17, and of B was 8.
and giving totals of I get my zeros wrong. Three hundred and forty thousand is it? Yes, three hundred and forty thousand from A, sixty-four thousand from B, so a total of four hundred and four thousand as the total contribution, that throughput contribution. Subtract the fixed costs to get the profit. And again, be careful. If they go this far in the exam, probably you'd be told total fixed costs. And if you were told total fixed costs were 100,000, fine, you just subtract them. If you're not told, we make the same assumption as before. We assume that the costings were based on production to meet demand. So we assume the costings were based on assuming we'd produce 20,000 A's and 10,000 B's, but we didn't know that we were limited to hours. And the fixed overheads, well remember, everything in the cost card now we're assuming to be fixed apart from the materials. So for A, there's labour five, there's variable seven, there's fix, real fix three, but the total of them, five, seven, three, 15 a unit, we're assuming is fixed. And similarly with B, uh, two, 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 uh, six dollars a unit. So we were budgeting on fixed costs in total of 300,000 plus 60,000. Uh, resulting in uh, a maximum profit of 44,000. And there we are. Now again, to do all of that is unlikely, uh, you know, just in one objective test question. But each bit of it could be relevant. Obviously knowing what we mean by in the first exercise contribution, the second exercise throughput, and the fact that we do our, uh, we rank the products on the basis of contribution uh, uh, per unit of limited resource or throughput per unit of limited resource. A um, couple of other things to mention in this question. First of all, B. A uh, bit of definition here, but B says calculate and interpret the throughput accounting ratios. Well, although it's on one of the list on one of the previous pages, the definition of the throughput accounting ratio um, it's the return per factory hour. divided by the cost per factory hour. Now we know what return per factory hour is, it's the throughput per uh, hour, which we worked out earlier, $8.50 and $8. What we mean by the cost per factory hour, before I actually calculate the numbers, It's the total fixed costs divided by uh, the limited hours available. So uh, let's put the numbers to it for this one. First of all, the cost per factory hour Uh, the total of the fixed costs we'd worked out a minute ago, where is it? Oh, 360,000. I'm not going to go back through the reasons for it. Um, but we've got total fixed costs of 360,000. The limited hours from the question with 48,000 hours available. And therefore, 
the cost per factory hour is $7.50. Uh, we already know um, the return per factory hour or the throughput per hour. Uh, A, let me check the figures. A was $8.50, B was 8 And therefore, the throughput accounting ratio, we work out for each product separately. So for product A, uh, $8.50 or the cost per factory hour of $7.50 is what? I get 1.13. I know I'll need to do less than one place, it's unless the question specifies different. Uh, for B, $8 over $7.50, which is. at 1.07. So as far as the arithmetic is concerned, that's it. Uh, I said earlier, to do all those bits in an exam, in one question wouldn't be required, but any bit could be. As far as the interpretation, that it says part B calculates and interpret, two things. The first is perhaps a bit silly, a bit unnecessary. Uh, in that, the higher the throughput accounting ratio, the better the, the product. You know, A is the higher of the two, that's best, B is second best. But of course we already knew that anyway, because the throughput return was higher for A than for B. The other thing though, of course, is if you think about it, we want, we'd like to try and achieve a throughput accounting ratio of more than one. We've got these fixed costs. It's, going, it's costing us $7.50 an hour to run the factory. Uh, we want, therefore, to try and achieve at least $7.50 an hour return uh, from each product. Now, here they are both greater than one, which is fine, or obviously the higher the better. Well, we'd want to do anything we could to get them more than one. Uh, if they were below one, you know, we'd look to see, can we increase the selling price? Can we cut the cost of materials? Can we produce faster? Think about it. If you could produce less time per unit, the um, throughput goes up. Or oh, return per factory hour, rather, goes up. Um, and we'd, oh, we'd try and reduce fixed costs. So we'd do anything we could to try and get them more than one. Uh, C does say, suggest some reasons why you might decide not to withdraw an unprofitable one. What we mean here is just suppose uh, B had a throughput accounting ratio of only 0.9, which would mean the return was less than the cost per hour, in that sense not profitable. Uh, well, you might, for several reasons. Um, Perhaps the most obvious one being that maybe the products are linked, they go together, you know, maybe A was desks and B was chairs and we sell them as a package. Or in fact, if you did withdraw B, it depends on what else we could make instead. You see here, if you stopped doing B, you've got hours left over. You see, if even if you only made A, You'd only be using 40,000 hours. The capacity is 48,000. So you're always aiming to be more than one, but just because it's less than one wouldn't mean automatically that you stopped producing. Okay, that's um, limiting factor analysis.